And when you take somebody with the personality of Donald Trump, who doesn't like to be told what to do and doesn't take criticism very well and doesn't also delegate responsibility very well or anything else and just kind of wants to, you know, do what he wants to do, it's not surprising that they kind of tried to govern by executive order and that a lot of people don't really know what the powers of the president actually are. So the executive orders caused a lot of panic, but what they didn't actually do is do very much. And so um, that's been kind of interesting to watch. Um, and the the protests, again, I expected those. I've been covering protest movements in this country, which have been steadily growing over the last eight years. And so I expected protests. I did not expect them to be as big and as widespread and as fast as they have been. The protests that happened the day after the election where people across the country were out in the streets, um, where students were walking out of their high school classes across the country, that feeds into the momentum for the Women's March. Um, the Women's March then in turn feeds into all of these local actions that are happening everywhere. Um, the people that rushed to the airports to, pro uh, to protest the Muslim ban, that fit into the next round of things. Um, the taxi workers going on strike um, at JFK airport on the, the day of the Muslim ban, that then fed into the Yemeni business owners shuttering their businesses um, in what we New Yorkers called the, the bodega strike. And then that then feeds into today's day without an immigrant. And so we watch these things roll and people are learning from each other and now because of social media, it's just that much easier to organize something like this than it was like back in 2006, which was the last time there was a really major um, day without an immigrant action. So, for instance, on the day of Trump's inauguration, there were massive protests in Washington, D.C. There were blockades at different entrances to the inauguration celebration by different groups from different movements. So there was a Black Lives Matter blockade that um, some people that I know from groups like BYP 100 were involved in. There was a blockade specifically tied to the environment and the Dakota Access Pipeline. Um, so things like that that really drew on the organizing people had already been doing um, have been part of this. The people who really took over and, and framed the massive women's march are people that got together and started doing organizing like this together in the Obama era um, around Black Lives Matter. Um, the Working Families Party, which has been part of the, um, or really kicked off the Resist Trump Tuesdays actions, they really, I mean, they were founded before the Obama era, but they really grew in strength from working alongside the Occupy Wall Street. And Nalini Stamp, who is um, one of the coordinators of the, the nationwide actions, was central to Occupy Wall Street here in New York and was also part of the founding of the Dream Defenders in Florida, which was the group that marched from Daytona to Sanford after Trayvon Martin was killed and have been doing organizing around racial justice and police violence um, ever since. And so everywhere you look, there are people who cut their teeth um, on the various movements in the Obama years. And then there are all these people who didn't, who are now coming out for the first time. There was, there was one more thing I was going to say in response to your other question, which was that the, the one member of Trump's cabinet to be defeated so far was the, um, the guy he nominated to be labor secretary, who was literally a fast food CEO. And it is not an accident that the, the fast food movement, the Fight for 15, those workers um, had massive protests this week against him. And I don't think it's a coincidence that that was the, the least successful nominee because there was already a movement shaped around that. And so, you know, the, the Democratic Party is kind of a mess. Um, it's been kind of a mess for a while. Um, I think the smarter people within the Democratic Party realized that their strategy for winning this election was completely wrong um, and that it totally failed. There are definitely people who are going to cling to their losing strategy until you pry it from their cold, dead hands. But there's also... Um, the recognition from at least some of these people that the movement on the ground can only, or well, that's not true. It, it definitely can also hurt them, but that it, it gives them some power. And so you've seen people like Elizabeth Warren, obviously Bernie Sanders. So you've seen some Democrats sort of flat footed and, and freaked out by these protests because the Democratic Party is mostly doesn't really want social movements to be part of it um, and others embracing it. And 
I guess the real question is going to be, you know, is the Democratic Party going to get relevant or is it going to die? And um, I don't think that's hyperbole to say that this party is, you know, it has lost two thirds of state legislatures despite the Republicans platforms and the things that the Republicans want to do being massively unpopular. Um, But the Democrats have not fought. They have not listened to what people need and what people want. They moved right. And the thing about moving right is that people who want a right wing candidate are going to vote for the right wing candidate. They're not going to vote for the slightly less right wing candidate. And people who want the left wing one end up staying home. And that's how we got President Donald Trump.